Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, first off, I apologize if my voice sounds a bit weird. I am a little bit under the weather, which is why I kind of wanted to do today's video a little bit different. I didn't want something that was very research or editing or recording intensive, so I decided to do something a little bit different with the format. If you guys like it, maybe we could do more of it in the future. I don't really know. We'll see how it goes today because um, today I'm going to be doing something, something that's been suggested a couple of times here on my channel. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the trend of animation analog horror. For those of you that don't know what analog horror is, it's basically the internet subgenre of found footage film, but more complicated. There's a lot more to it than just that, of course. While still having elements of found footage film, it has a lot of other qualities that make it distinct enough to be its own thing. Typically, it's in the style of a VHS recording and in the format of a documentary, a safety video, an orientational video, maybe a home video. Basically, in the form that makes it feel older, maybe low budget, kind of depending on what the series is, it's probably going to feel very low quality or not as professionally made, but that's kind of the point of it. And most of the time, it's a series made up of recordings, maybe audio files and imagery that contains a lot of cryptic messages and information that is basically just supposed to be pieced together to make up a solid, cohesive story. There's a lot to it because there's a lot of analog horror series out there. Some of the more popular ones include the Mandela Catalog, Gemini home entertainment, local 58s, the back rooms. Basically what you have to know now is that it's just this very popular thing on the internet. So obviously with something as popular as analog horror, it would be no surprise that it would probably bleed into other properties. In today's case, one of those properties is, you know, obviously Jurassic Park. And while I did know that there were a couple of Jurassic Park analog horror videos out there, I didn't think there was enough to really make a full-fledged analysis deep dive video on it. But then I found out that there's a whole playlist of Jurassic Park analog horror videos that they're definitely of varying quality, I will admit, but I feel like with these 10 videos, there's enough to make one long video out of it instead of trying to make individual videos out of it because truth be told, I just don't think there's enough information there, at least not yet, to make a full video on them individually. You'll see what I mean as we continue. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at them today. Yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. So we're just gonna go down the list here. By the way, all the videos aren't by the same person. They're made by different people. A couple of them are made by the same people. For example, the first two. The first two are made by the same person whose channel name goes by Rustico. And in my opinion, I think these are probably the more well-made ones. In the first video, it's titled InGen's Hostile Dinosaur Safety Video VHS, and it's divided into two parts, with the first part titled Section 1 HVA Emergency. And as the title suggests, it's a safety video, and it basically goes through safety protocols for when herbivores attack your vehicles, in this case, Triceratops. And this is something that's pretty common for analog horror. It'll oftentimes start off as something completely normal or different, and then as you progress through the video or the series, things get more disturbing. Sometimes it's gradual, sometimes it comes out of nowhere, it depends on what you're watching. For this one, this first part is completely normal. It's pretty standard, it just goes through what you should do should a herbivore like Triceratops attack your vehicle. One of the things that it says you can do is call security with walkie-talkies that are in your vehicle because security can play a frequency that can shoo them away. Part 2 is titled Section 2 CBO Emergency, and this is where things get very disturbing. It starts off normal, it discusses power outages caused by tropical storms, but then it tries to go into the topic of carnivores. However, as soon as it mentions carnivores, out of nowhere the video turns into a montage of disturbing and distorted imagery with very disturbing sounds playing in the background. And some of the imagery looks familiar from the things that we've seen in the lore and the movies of Jurassic Park, but then there's other images there that look like are just there to be creepy and n not much else. This goes on for a little bit, but eventually the montage ends with this InGen logo and a voice that repeatedly says, viewing of this tape is prohibited, discard it immediately. Then we have Rustico's second video, which is titled InGen Velociraptor Escape Tape VHS. The tape that plays is titled File VBI8, and it says the year, which is 1987. This is followed with an audio log of a park worker that is warning others about a Velociraptor breakout. Then 
then it cuts to static where an image starts to form within it and you can barely make a figure out before it abruptly cuts away. From here, there's just a lot of different info that cuts in and out. There's a date that flashes, which is 7-18-1987. There are a couple of shots and eventually a jump scare of a T-Rex inside a facility. And then after all of that, it then cuts to facts about velociraptors. It starts talking about the velociraptor inhabitants at the park and it eventually talks about their speed. This is significant because it makes mention, very creepy mention I might add, of Robert Muldoon and how he needs to start running because, you know, in the movie, Velociraptors chased him and killed him. <laughs> and then for a quick bit there, it cuts to distorted video clips of dinosaurs and Robert himself. And then there's a cut of this very Five Nights at Freddy's-esque videotape of a velociraptor in a hallway. And finally, this video ends with a POV camera shot of a man in the kitchen being attacked and killed by a velociraptor. And one thing I want to point out about this scene specifically is that I'm pretty sure that they utilized a, an indie game that was created to literally recreate the raptors in the kitchen scene from the original movie, which I've always loved. I always loved the fact that they did that because that was one of my favorite scenes as a kid. I don't know, I just really wanted to mention the indie game. I thought that was cool. Anyways, moving on. So this next video is literally just titled Dennis Todd and it belongs to a channel called The InGen Files. If you take a couple of minutes to explore their channel, it's clear that it was dedicated for this analog horror video series possibly, but it only has one video. My guess is that maybe the original intent was to create more, but I don't know what happened. There's only the one there. And of the one that's there, it there's really not much to it. It shows an image of a warehouse. I, I think that's a warehouse. And it has a pretty creepy automated voice repeating the same lines over and over again. It says, Dennis Todd was found dead in his security office in warehouse 13. Dennis Todd was found dead in his security office in warehouse 13 or 30. I can't quite make out the number it's trying to say, but I think it's one of the two. There's also information in the video description, and it's in the perspective of Dennis Todd's son. It says, Dennis Todd, my dad, went missing in 1994. In Jurassic Park's opening years, my dad was working as a security officer for InGen. He promised to take me one day. A box of VHS tapes showed up at my doorstep, with a note saying, You are Dennis's son. This belongs to you now. Finish the job your father couldn't. Distribute the tapes to the public. I don't know what to think anymore. I was thinking for months about if I wanted to post these or not. I don't know if this is some sick joke. I've tried to get the name of the person who sent me these tapes, but no luck. So I decided to just post these to get this weight off my shoulders. So I mean, yeah, aside from that, there's not much else to this. So the next one we have is InGen Victims 197B-JP-92 Analog Horror. It's made by a channel called CD Jurassic, and the video itself is in the format of an incident report on casualties caused by the dinosaurs. There are a total of four different casualties listed, but only three names are publicly given. There's John Cremald, I think that's how you pronounce that last name, Kim LaJuan, Alvarez Ruiz, and the last one is Redacted. After showing off the names, they also show images of the people that were killed, along with images of where their bodies were found, followed by reports that shows the cause of their death. And these reports get very intense. They get progressively more graphic as it continues. The first death is pretty clean, with a gash at the neck indicating that's how the person was killed. The rest of the body remains almost untouched. The second death shows torn limbs and deep gashes to the person's back. The third one's pretty graphic, showing both legs ripped off and the insides completely eviscerated. The last one is completely redacted and we aren't able to see the severity of the person's conditions to their body but at the very top, you can see a bit of the head showing that a chunk of it is missing, indicating that this one is the most graphic one out of the others. And the video ends with a creepy warning saying that where there's dinosaurs, there is danger and that they will kill you. The next one we're going to be looking at is Jurassic Park VHS The Child Incident. 
It was created by Nissan Stop Motion, and there's nothing too deep about this one. It starts off by showing off some images of some compies, before eventually showing an image of a random baby, which I am not going to show because uh, I don't need YouTube thinking there's anything, you know, g weird going on in this video. But the image of the baby becomes very distorted and creepy. I mean, this is obviously a reference to the baby compie death from the original Jurassic Park book, and it's just being portrayed in an analog horror style. Again, there's nothing too deep about this one. I don't think it was meant to be that deep. I don't think it was meant to tell like an actual in-depth story. I think it was just supposed to be for the sake of referencing this scene. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, at least from what I can see. The next few on the list were made by a channel known as the Rexy Rex. The first of the few is titled Jurassic Park Velociraptor Safety Training Tape 1992. Yeah, in case you couldn't tell with these videos, Velociraptors are definitely a popular candidate when it comes to Jurassic Park analog horror. And it makes sense because in the original trilogy at least, the Velociraptors definitely had the most scare factor out of all the dinosaurs. Now in this newer trilogy, they serve more as superheroes. Nothing too bad actually happens in this one. Most of the video is fairly normal, at least for analog horror standards. You have an animated voice talking about Jurassic Park's Velociraptor and the safety protocols revolved around it. It also gives out some fun facts as well, things in regards to their diet, their size, and their speed. They say that the raptors are able to run 40 miles per hour. After that last fact, the tape glitches out with the lines repeating, that's faster than you. It ends with the audio cutting out, followed by the video. If you take a look at the top of the description of this one, there's a pretty cryptic message written backwards that says, Robert is not safe. And yeah, you could put two and two together. It refers to the Velociraptors hunting Robert Muldoon. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory what this is referencing, so we're just gonna move on. So this next one is also made by the Rexy Rex, and it's titled Jurassic Park Lights Test 1992. I mean, it's exactly how it sounds. It's a recorded light test where multiple tests are done, and after every test transition, it cuts to a window. There are a total of four or five tests, but the first few are fine. Nothing really happens. It's the last test where things go a little differently. First off, the test isn't labeled unlike the others, and when it cuts to the window, a raptor can be seen behind it glitched out with a few other images. When the test ends, an image of a man gradually fades in with text under it saying, In loving memory, James Moraman, 1959 to 1992. And this implies he was a worker at Jurassic Park and his death was caused by, I'm assuming, a velociraptor given what's shown to us in the video. There's not much else in the video, but there is another cryptic message in the description that's written backwards. When spelled out correctly, it says they are at the door. Moving on, we have the Rexy Rex's last video, which is titled InGen Top Secret Project 1996. It starts off with text talking about another island that was found not too far from what I'm assuming is supposed to be Isla Nublar. And I can safely assume that because the island they're referring to is revealed to be Isla Sorna later in the video. The text continues talking about wanting to move something to this island. It states, we can keep it there, hide it away from the public in the meantime, otherwise it will just lead to disaster again. We can keep it there. Before the screen cuts out, it's revealed that this animal they're talking about is a Spinosaurus as a small image of it appears briefly. At the very end of the video, it shows a quick image of a T-Rex in the jungle before glitching out and transitioning to a very brief video recording of a man in the woods clearly distressed and possibly attacked. It's kind of hard to tell, especially since the video ends very abruptly. However, this video also has a cryptic message in its description, which again, it's spelled backwards, but when you spell it out right, it says, Says it is out there. In the next video on the playlist, it's titled InGen Sector 29 Encounter, and it was also made by CD Jurassic. So according to this video's description, this one is actually supposed to be more themed around the Lost World. You'll see it more as we continue, but this video starts off with night vision cameras recording outside a facility before cutting to a warning alarm, which states that an unidentified amount of raptors have been located roaming around Sector 29 of Isla Nublar. 
In this warning, it's advised to anybody in the area to take shelter to avoid not just raptors, but friendly fire from the people who are trying to subdue the raptors, as they can accidentally get shot by them as well. The specific raptors that are mentioned in this video are the tiger-striped ones that are specifically from the Lost World. After this warning finishes, we cut back to the cameras, which switch around to see the raptors roaming around. I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that's Jurassic World Evolution footage they're using for these raptors roaming around, which honestly, I think that's a pretty clever use of the game. Anyways, the video cuts to another POV shot of a man walking around Sector 29. In the recording, raptor calls can be heard nearby, as text flash on screen saying, I think they saw me. The video ends with the man being attacked by the raptors and the camera cutting out. In our final video, Jurassic Park VHS Security Camera, it's an orientational style video talking about Jurassic Park security cameras. Pretty self-explanatory just from the title. This is another one made by Nissan Stop Motion who made that child incident one. And I have to say, out of the two, I think this is the better one that he or she made. We go through the different security cameras placed around the park, starting with Cam B1, which picks up nothing. We switch to Cam P5, which also captures nothing. Finally, we switch to Cam S3, with flashlights enabled. At first, it captures nothing, but then there's a raptor jump scare. And then the video pretty much ends. There's not much to this one, also not that deep, but again, I think it's better made than the previous one that we watched from Nissan Stop Motion, but that's just me. Alright, not bad, not bad. Those were the 10 Jurassic Park analog horror videos that were added to this playlist. There's probably more out there that just haven't been added onto the playlist. But for now, I'm just going to stick with these 10 and just talk about these 10. Um, I mean, there's not really much I could say aside from what I've already said earlier in the video. But I think my takeaway from all of this is that Jurassic Park and analog horror mix pretty well, actually. It's like I said earlier in the video, Jurassic Park is just fitting for the VHS style format that analog horror is going for. It fits the, the format of a documentary, orientational video, safety video, which we ended up getting in these different videos in the playlist. The one thing I will say though is that in these videos, there wasn't too much of a story within them. Again, I don't think that was like the initial intention with these videos. I'm pretty sure that each of these creators have their different intentions for these video projects. Maybe it was meant to be minimal. Maybe it was literally meant just to see if they could do an analog horror style video with Jurassic Park content. And in my opinion, it, it actually works. I think they did a really good job. And honestly, I thought like for the most part, they were pretty creative in what they added into these video projects. Clips from like video games, and from projects that never came to fruition. I noticed in one of the videos, I don't 100% remember which one it is, I apologize. It involves the Velociraptors, so a lot of these videos use Velociraptors, so it's kind of hard to figure out which one is which, but the one that you, the one of the ones that used the Velociraptors, they used footage of like walking animations for a Jurassic Park game that was canceled and they just like reused that footage for for this project. I don't know, it's just there's something clever about using material that was like from canceled projects or projects that are never going to use that again into something like this and I think it just it works perfectly. For the most part the story elements were kept pretty minimal. I kind of liked the implications of some of these uh, different videos. One specifically that I really liked was the uh, the incident report one where it listed the names of the victims and the their images and the places where their bodies were found with all of the red redacted and censored information. What I really like about that one is that it felt very realistic. It felt very grounded. It wasn't just a montage of disturbing imagery because I feel like when you're doing a montage of disturbing imagery and unsettling video clips and whatnot, it just feels like you're kind of doing it for the sake of making it disturbing and unsettling. Whereas with the incident report, the disturbing elements came from what was being implied. And what was being implied was that these park workers, these people, were killed and eaten by the dinosaurs. And that information is relayed to us in a way that doesn't feel like it's it's explicit, but at the same time, it feels very, very unsettling. I don't know, I think just being simple and subtle like that 
works when it comes to analog horror. I'm not trying to talk shit to uh, Rustico or anybody here. Um, you know, this is just my personal preference for what I like. Maybe some people prefer the disturbing imagery. Maybe they like being scared like that. I will say though, Rustico's videos, they were, they were very well edited and I still like them for different elements and for different kinds of scares. Uh, it definitely brought back more of a Five Nights at Freddy's feel in my opinion, but um, you know, again, people might like it for that reason, or maybe they see something else in it that I don't. I'm not really sure. I didn't, I didn't really pick up much of a story with that one, if there was supposed to be a story, or if it was just maybe like a, a video editing exercise to see if, you know, maybe Jurassic Park could be made into an analog horror style, which is probably the case for most of these video projects. But regardless, I, they, I think they have potential. This is not the only like analog horror style videos that have that incorporate dinosaurs into it or like you know dinosaur adjacent content apparently there's uh, a godzilla one that's called the suitmation trials which i have a feeling people are going to recommend to me in the comments section for me to check out after this one so i just wanted to make mention of that real quick plus i think there were other like miscellaneous dinosaur ones that i didn't include because it just you know it's not jurassic park but it's still dinosaurs if there's enough content in those videos even if it's multiple videos that I could just group together like in this like what I did here I could probably make a follow-up video to this one and maybe check out some more dinosaur analog horror related topics I don't really know well anyways I hope you guys um enjoyed this video today I hope you enjoyed the format this was a very a very loose and freestyle format I didn't have a script or anything with it I kind of just went with it, you know? So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to see more stuff like this, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to, to doing more stuff like this just because it would be nice, a, a nice break from the much larger projects that I constantly put myself through. Don't get me wrong. I love editing the long form stuff. I want to keep doing the long form stuff. But every now and again, I want to take a break with something a bit more easy and, you know, not as editing or recording intensive. And uh, who knows, you know, maybe maybe I can incorporate my face a little bit more. <laughs> I don't know why people would want to see that, but apparently they do. But yeah, that's all I have to say for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and please have a nice day.